Good Friday is good for the neglected souls. This word clearly tells us that as a church, we are called to be good to the neglected soul, souls and do something good for the neglected soul. In what way? Now we see <clears throat> Mother Mary experiencing terrible agony in her heart. She is experiencing what an old man Simeon had prophesied in Luke chapter 2 verse 35. This is what he said. A sword will pierce through your soul or your heart. Yes, looking at his own son hanging on the cross was a terrible experience for Mary. Now Jesus knew he was hanging there as her eldest son and he has a responsibility to do and particularly he knew the situation in which his own mother was in. His brother, own brothers and sisters did not believe in him. So he had to find someone who will take care of her. And he found another disciple who was very close to him. In his own gospel, he always describes him as the beloved disciple. Beloved disciple. Jesus loved him. He loved Jesus. He loved Jesus so much, he leaned on the breast of Jesus Christ and asked him, Who is it, Lord? Who is going to betray you? Now, Jesus knew that he was the right person. In fact, he was the right person. Except for the time when he was arrested and put in prison in Patmos, he was taking care of her. Even now, if you go to Ephesus, they will show you a house where they said, John stayed here till the end of his life and he was taking care of Mother Mary in this house. Now here what we see through these beautiful words is that Jesus was fulfilling his family responsibility. Jesus gave importance to family. We should all accept that. Even though he didn't get married, he respected family life. See, I always say, if Jesus had wanted to do he could have come as a full grown person somewhere in the wilderness and entered into the village or into the world or showed himself to other people. No, he didn't choose that. He didn't jump from heaven as a full grown man. He entered into the womb of Mother Mary. That's why we uh, sing in the song of the church, Lord, you did not despise a virgin's womb. And we also sing that in uh, the Christmas hymn, O Come All You Faithful. Okay? So Jesus respected family life. He entered into the family life. He grew up as a little boy. He respected his parents. And the scripture is very clear. He was obedient to them. So Jesus always respected family responsibility, family ties. Now the question is, do we show such respect to our own family members, love them, treat them as people who are going to inherit heaven together, I told this in the previous service. In uh, St. Andrew's Kirk, they use a communion order of worship written by Reverend Dr. William Barclay. In the confession, this is what he writes. Lord, 
we have been careless and inconsiderate we have been moody and irritable and difficult to live with we have treated those whom above all we ought to cherish with a discourtesy we would never dare to show to strangers what he was trying to say is that many a time we use careless words hurting words to our family members but you won't do that to the stranger you won't do that to the people who are living outside you will put on a very respectable uh, person as a respectable person and you respect other people you speak politely to other people but how do you speak to your own family members to your parents to your children to your brothers and sisters see i'm not i don't have the faith that we you just have to come and sit in the church on good friday and simply go as you came no the lord wants you to have a change in you so through this word jesus is speaking to us how we behave in our family do we respect our own members in the family you're called to it was jesus god who said honor your father and mother okay honor your father and mother do we respect our parents see they say when god gave this commandment honor your father and mother he was not giving that commandment to the children normally we teach them in the sunday school okay honor your father and mother okay no when god gave the commandment he was talking to the elderly people okay around 50s and 60s and their fathers the parents they were in 80s why he told you know because these people got liberated from egypt they were trying to get to the promised land they wanted to go there and settle there they are in the wilderness now as they were marching towards promised land the 80s and 90s they are not walking fast you know how you feel when the elderly parents don't walk fast along with you no you scold them you ask them to walk fast sometimes you think is setta nalla irukum and perse like many people think in that way then at that time god said honor your father and mother and that is the only commandment which has a promise what is the promise when you honor and father and mother you will live long in the land that god is going to giving you so he said don't think that, why he combines uh, honoring your parents and the promised land is simply this you are trying to go there and settle there but unless you honor your father and mother you will not go there and live a happy life in the promised land to your brothers and sisters in christ the lord wants you and me to respect the members of our family and show love towards them now probably i will extend it little further and say all the members in the congregation are our family church is a family we should treat all others as our own brothers and sisters we may have difference of opinion we may argue about certain things but never never forget you are called to lead a loving life loving other members in the congregation see there is always a story about uh, john the disciple <clears throat> he stayed in ephesus as an old man they used to carry him in a chair and put him in some place and he will participate in the holy communion and he won't be able to talk much he was very very old so at the end of the service some person will come and ask him 
Father, you want to say something to the people? So they have written, this is the usual sentence or the question that he would ask, it seems. He will say, look at the congregation, looking at the congregation, he will say, children, do you love one another? He will always ask the question, children, do you love one another? He was talking to the congregation, not just your own brothers and sisters, no. Do you love each other who are members in the congregation? Let's keep a moment of silence. Loving God. Good Friday is good for the neglected souls. Because you are asking us to love the neglected people. Lord, it could be our own members within the family or the members within the church or anyone who is suffering in this world. Lord, particularly at this time, we think of the senior citizens who are neglected by their own children Lord, help the church to reach out to them and support them. Thank you for the ministry that we do to their senior citizens through our church. Thank you for the support that we give. Thank you for encouraging us to support the old age home that we have in Bizanagar. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of the fellowships, men's fellowship and women's fellowship, that goes to the members who are unable to come to the church and have a time of fellowship with them. How much joy it gives to them, O oh Lord. Help us to realize that and reach out to the people who are unable to come to the church because of their old age sicknesses and weaknesses. Lord, you have shown through this word that you are a responsible person within a family. Help us to do the same in our personal life too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.